Hello, everyone, and welcome to Conversations with Sandy and Manda. I'm Manda Stack, intuitive coach and energy clearing specialist. I help people get clear, calm, and connected so that they can make great decisions and feel confident and free no matter what's going on around them. And I'm joined today by Sandy. Hi, I'm Sandy Walden of Serenity. I'm a grief coach and a grief coach trainer. I work with people who have experienced loss of any sort. It could be loss of your pets, of your home, of your financial situation. And of course, what comes to mind for most of us is losing someone to death. Far too often, people feel as though that's a place they have to remain in deep despair, and I simply believe otherwise. So I work with people to find safe, healthy ways to process their emotions, their thoughts, and their feelings so that they can once again reclaim joy and peace in their lives. Thank you, Sandy. We want to welcome you to a conversation today about compassion and empathy. So we're really glad you're joining us and I want to invite you into a, just a real brief meditation, uh, relaxing and coming in tune with yourself. So if you would like to just briefly close your eyes and notice your breathing and take a nice, long, slow, deep breath. And if there are any tight or tense places in your body, you can just notice those and invite them to gently release. And take another deep breath. Ah, and when you're ready, you can open your eyes again. It's so good to be here with you today. Sandy and I wanted to have a conversation about compassion and empathy, especially in this time of the coronavirus. We are recording this in early April, and there are so many um, things that are shifting, a lot of unknowns, a lot of concern. And we wanted to um, invite you into a conversation about how you can care for yourself and have compassion and empathy, even in some really difficult times. I think that's absolutely true. I agree with you. And part of that begins with what is compassion? What is empathy? And how, Amanda just said something brilliant. She said that we begin with ourselves. Is that selfish? Is that wrong? Is that okay? What do you think about these things? What makes sense to you? So Amanda, I'd really like to hear what you uh, how you define compassion and empathy so that we can explore this a little bit more. Right. So the dictionary definition of compassion is sympathetic pity and concern for the sufferings or misfortunes of others. Sympathetic pity or concern for the sufferings or misfortunes of others. So as I read that out loud, can you relate those? Yes, I can certainly relate to that. And here's the definition of empathy, the ability to understand and share the feelings of others. Again, is that something that you can relate with? I know I can. It's good. I think that we're starting with um, working definitions of what these two important terms are. And I'd be curious to know how those definitions land for others. Uh, sympathy and pity and I I'm not sure I'm not sure how those words land for everybody so I'm I'm really looking forward to the conversation that we that we have from other people as they share it with others and the idea that empathy is my ability to truly feel what you're sharing with me Amanda, Amanda do you feel as though I need to be able to tune in to empathy to be able to feel compassion Ooh, good question. Well, if empathy is, I, I understand beyond the dictionary definition of empathy, I always think of the heart when I think of empathy, like a heart connection with others. You know, if you've ever watched a sad movie and one of the characters that you really relate to is crying and, he, and you've started crying, that's a, an example of empathy. Um, and now, when things are so tender and raw for so many people in these times, um, I think empathy can feel maybe even a little precarious because if we open our hearts to, to the suffering around us, 
Is it going to be too much? Am I going to be overwhelmed? Um, so part of this conversation, like what Sandy's great question was at the start, is it selfish to have compassion for ourselves, to have empathy for ourselves? Are we, um, are we not allowing our empathy or compassion for others then? Is, is, are we um, withdrawing that from others if we have compassion for ourselves? Personally, I don't think so. Um, and if someone considers it selfish, they certainly have every right to feel the way they do. But I believe that unless I'm taking care of myself, I don't have the ability. I have nothing left to reach out to others. So as far as I'm concerned, I like to sort of filter some things. Now, I'm not a deeply empathic person that feels, knows what somebody is thinking and feeling before they enter the room. That's not my experience. But certainly, if any of us have ever lived with a dog or a cat or a horse, we're very aware of how the energy changes depending on whether people are excited or calm, angry or happy. And so we may not be aware that we're empathic, but we all are, I believe, at least to some degree. But if I filter out. If I can understand these feelings are yours and these are mine, I personally find it much easier to be compassionate for myself as well as for others. Mm, yes. Owning your own feelings, recognizing that someone else's feelings are their own experience separate from yours, but you can still hold what they're experiencing with compassion. And you had mentioned about filtering um, things that come into you. And I, I too, I've been doing some um, selective media fasting. Uh, I, I believe that this is a time when it's important for us to know the facts and, and the latest information for our safety and the safety of those around us. And yet, it's way too easy to get overwhelmed with the information that's right there at our fingertips, especially in this day of social media. There's a, um, something called compassion fatigue, compassion fatigue, that is actually a well-known um, thing that happens to people, especially in service professions like um, caregivers. And... I think right now, compassion fatigue could relate to anyone. Would you agree, Sandy? I absolutely do. And so I'm going to share a few things that I do that make me feel better. And I'm okay if that's selfish. And then I'd invite you, I'd love to hear what you do. And I work with people who are experiencing grief. So people will often think that that can become truly overwhelming. It's not been for me. For me, it's very heart filling. But I still know that I need to find a way to, to be compassionate with myself. I need to find a way to recharge and rejuvenate and take really good care of myself to let go of the feelings that I may have shared with somebody who's in deep pain. So for me, some of those things are going out and working in the yard, which is such a joy right now as the plants are waking up, taking a walk, taking a long, hot bath. These are things that help me come back to center, help me come back to who I am and release the thoughts and feelings that are not mine. And it, for me, it sort of shifts. Oh, there's that word again. It sort of shifts from the position of empathy to the feeling of compassion. I'm not feeling what I've experienced with the person I've been speaking with, but I certainly can offer them my love and my compassion. For me, that feels more gentle and it lets me get past that compassion fatigue. I'm not overwhelmed anymore. I can love them and care for them from here. Does that make sense? That's beautiful. And you are modeling for the rest of us a great way to take care of yourself. Um, like you said, you know, you are a, a grief coach. So you go to the depths of, of human um, sadness and difficulty with people and you are able to accompany them and not get overwhelmed. Um, 
and I, I really appreciate the ways that you're naming that you do tend to your own self-care uh, so that you can be there for others and really be a resource for them. And my own experience with compassion fatigue in my former work as a church pastor, I, I, you know, I too would accompany people in some really tough times in, in their lives, um, divorce, death, um, difficult, you know, depression and, and, and other situations. And so I, I had to come to terms with my own compassion fatigue at times. And I want to focus on that word fatigue. So what is that? That's tiredness. That's where you, you know, you're depleted um, physically, emotionally, spiritually. And what does that mean? That means that it's time for you to fill yourself up to receive instead of give. And so for me, compassion fatigue has been, when I recognize it, it's good to recognize what, you know, when you might be feeling that, it's when you get a little irritable perhaps, or you're not feeling like yourself. Um, those might be signals that, that you're a little um, depleted. So for me, I, you know, I love what you said, Sandy, about getting outside and I too, I'm, I'm a big fan of nice, um, baths, um, a good night's sleep can do wonders for me. Sometimes just um, saying, okay, that's enough for today and putting the day to rest and going to bed and waking up for a new day. That can be uh, a great way to reset. And, you know, whatever tools that, that you have to care for yourself, those are the, that's the time to really get them out, to acknowledge that you may be feeling fatigued and it's okay to take a break. One of the um, things that I would do is I would kind of give all my responsibilities over to God and say, okay, divine, <laughs> you know, the world is not going to stop running if I, you know, take the afternoon off. <laughs> I know that you've got it. So, you know, none of us is holding up the world. None of us has that enormous responsibility. But we do have a responsibility to ourselves and perhaps to those in our circle of family and friends uh, or employees or coworkers. You know, we, you know, we want to be there for ourselves and for others. So compassion fatigue, um, just keeping an eye out for it for ourselves and caring for ourselves when, when it does come. I, I really appreciate the way you express that. Something I'd like to remind people is these ways that we talk about relieving that fatigue of rejuvenating. It's a wonderful thing if it's getting a good night's sleep, um, perhaps engaging in some quiet talk, having a cup of tea with someone, a meditation. It's okay too if it's laugh out loud. One of my favorite ways to feel better, to let some of this go, is to have a chat with my grandkids. The six-year-old loves to tell jokes and he laughs like nobody's business. It's very, very healing. What I would love to hear is what somebody else does because your experience is yours and mine, I live here with my husband, so it's a very different thing than somebody who's got two dogs, one cat, five children, and they each have jobs. So what works for me may, may or may not for someone else. I would love to hear what somebody else notices that tells them that they've reached that level that they need to step back. Is it a bell? Is it hearing themselves be loud or angry? Is it finding out that they just have no capacity to speak anymore? Maybe it's that they're going to the refrigerator too often. I don't know. But the signal is different for all of us. What signals you that you're ready? for a little bit of self-care, to extend some compassion to yourself. And what does that look like? So even being aware of what signal it is, um, we might need to figure that out for ourselves. Um, maybe invite you know, someone else to help us discern that as well. And I, I also think, um, you know, for someone who's more extroverted in nature, reaching out to others and connecting can be a great way to replenish and recharge as well. For introverts, it might be more like taking a bath <laughs> or working in the garden or doing something more solitary that rejuvenates you. Right, so this is not a one size fits all, is it? It's finding your way. And I encourage you to play. 
to, to try this on, to try that. Does it work today? Maybe not as much as yesterday. Maybe today is something different. To know it's not wrong, but that it really, really matters. It's all right if you've gotten overextended. Now's your time to step back and take care of you. And I want to remind you that when you're taking good care of you, you're not doing it just for you. You're doing it for everybody that you care about and everybody that you love and that you're taking care of. So to my mind, it's not only not selfish to take care of yourself, it might be a little selfish if we don't. Well said and a good point to end on. Thank you, Sandy. Sandy and I are here for you. We want you to know that you can reach out to us anytime. And my website is mydivineintuition.com. Sandy? And my website is www.sandywalden.com. I really encourage you to share your thoughts and your feelings and experiences with us with this conversation. We would like this conversation to go much further than the brief time of this recording because I think we both really feel that it matters and we hope that you do too. Feel free free to have this conversation with us, with each other, and feel free to share it because it matters. These thoughts, these experiences, we're not unique. And the more we share, the more we find out we're not alone. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you again in our next video. Thank you so much.